blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Preachers, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers' pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. ago the choir from heaven came to this world and announced glory to God in the highest 
on earth peace and goodwill to all men. Today I stand here to say to our sole administrator on this his first beginning hundred day of hundred days in office glory to God in the highest everybody say that with me glory to God in the highest. on earth's peace, on earth's peace. And, goodwill and goodwill to all men and women Point hand to him here say beginning with you Amen. Amen. Remain standing for a few minutes before you sit down. I'm used to standing for Jesus. I believe that there's no other power under the sun to stand for. I thank God for all in authority globally and worldwide. But there's only one name when you mention demons tremble. And that name is no other name. But it's the name above all other names. At the name of Jesus, every knee bow. And every tongue confess his Lord indeed. On behalf of we members of Edo State University. I say we members. We students and faculty. I hope you are hearing me, we. We want to congratulate our sole administrator, Professor Mike Isoku. <laughs> Uncle Mike. Brother Mike. I said, Brother Mike. I think brother is better than brother. This one doesn't bother you, he brothers you. And I want to say to all students of every belief and every denomination, Jesus said in the day he entered the house of Zacchaeus, this day is salvation come to this house. If you look upstairs, under one roof that covered the whole universe, called sky. The weather is bright in your favor. God is looking down on your behalf. Favoring you with goodness and mercy. I want on behalf of the team that came with me. Congratulate you sir. For being appointed. By military government. By Muslim. Head of government in the Edo state. To stir the affairs. Of this university. Until further notice. Everybody say hallelujah. hallelujah. I think God can look down from heaven today and say, That's my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Everybody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Since I do not have the gift of flattery, I think I'm qualified to say, At this time in history, our nation is blessed. Our state is blessed. Our people are blessed. And this university is blessed with the life of Professor Michael Isoku. Let me hear you say big hallelujah. hallelujah. Just two more minutes you'll be asked to sit down. Edo State University is a young university. But the fame of it is more than the age of it. And I'm grateful to God that though you are young in age, you are old in fame. We want not only to immortalize the great name you born and end yourself legally, academically, and training from a former obscured village now popularized by the intelligence of our intellectuals to bring to a world map 
one of the best universities in the continent of Africa. And by the grace of Almighty God, that name shall not be dented with any stain. That's why we are here to start a crusade operation, clean the campus. And it's to the glory of God that I announce to you that what we are starting here today shall go around the entire nation to help our youths to be free from the bondage of few evil-minded elements whom the enemy would have wanted to beguile and beguile and send to Hades and hell. He has failed in his bead and he will not succeed after today. Amen. Kindly take your seat if you can find any. Since this is not the night of oratory or poetry or grammar grammatizing, I will therefore simply cancel you on what can give you great future. How many of you would like to have a great future? Everyone here, do you like to have a great future? Do you know that to have a great future, you must have a good beginning? Because if you have no good beginning, you can never be a great future leader. As so administrator, I want to not only congratulate you that you have already served creditably 100 days in office, but it was a pride and delight in my heart to hear that even all God's salary have been paid. If you still have vacancy in this school, I'd like to apply. <laughs> well, I'm already won by implication and association. And I asked one of our senior ministers in the country just now, I said to mark my visit to Ekboma, something must be left in this campus today. And I'm glad, therefore, to say to you, as well, Administrator, tomorrow morning, Reverend Matthew Okwebo will send a check of 100000 to this school. Whatever you want to send it for, you can spend it for it. Can I hear you say hallelujah? Thank you very much, Reverend Matthew Okwebo, and congratulations to you as well, Administrator. Convey to our Governor, Group Captain Adamu Yang, the joy of our students and staff that in his time, and it's up to a year now, they have not been paying on time. Almost one year. Salary was not coming on time. Almost two years. Do you know that the last time you were not paid on time is the last time you were not paid on time? I hope you understand that English. I said the last time they were not paid on time is the last time they were not paid on time. Hereafter, before the need arise, the means will be there. How many can say amen to that? I'm grateful to God. And I want to congratulate all the senior members of staff otherwise known as special advisor or in another word deputy vice chancellors of every department especially my church member who attend church in a mosque every friday but today he'll be attending church on sunday instead of on friday how many of you would like to have a brother like that in all right so beginning from next week he will be speaking in every group of every chap chapel here. Did you hear me? Let him preach from Quran, chapter 53, where Muhammad said, the man who know the way have bid you come, why should you delay? <laughs> Let me hear you say hallelujah. I don't think after 
today, he will miss the way. I'm glad he's a forthright man. And God placed him here to be a great instrument for this university. Our mission here, myself, as senior professors and heads of our university that have come with me, are here for just one mission. To eradicate and exterminate forever the powers that once reared their head here. And never to germinate again because the root is destroyed. The power of darkness in a do State University. I am grateful to God that we left home with one assurance from God. Every tree that God didn't plant shall be uprooted. And I'm grateful that this campus is the first. We are starting this mission light for every student in all our university. 25 years ago, I went around the damn few universities in this country, out of which our sole administrator today became a Christian. Now he's not only a Christian, but a pastor. Not only a pastor, a brother in the Lord. Can I hear you say hallelujah? hallelujah. I'm grateful that God does not negotiate with man. He designs his life and gives him a will. Every time in the Bible you hear the word of God say, I said before you, life and death. How sorrowful and sad I was this afternoon when I rushed from the third service I went to preach today. And I heard the terrible news of the unexpected and untimely, unwarranted and unneeded death of Princess Diana. She died 12 midnight last night. Princess Diana is gone. She's not sick. She's dead. At 6 p.m. this evening, her body will be flown from Paris to London. She's made money. She's made name. She's made fame. But she lost her life. And how did she die? Went to Paris to perish. In an attempt to add to her fame, she brought shame. She's not hungry. She's a multi-millionaire. Her inheritance will not be finished by her children's children. The few years she's lived. But how I wish she's not dead. How I wish she was sick and in coma. To come back to see the uselessness of pursuing life meaninglessly. To some of you that are here this evening. This may be the only opportunity you have in life. To choose between life and death. If somebody told Princess Diana this time yesterday, you'll be dead this time tomorrow. She said, don't be silly. Security men will arrest the man. If it was a prophet that said so, he will lose his ministry. But she's gone and gone forever. The boyfriend she followed to France. They died in a tunnel. I don't know what you want to be in the future. But no one has made such a quick, speedy fame in our generation within 16 years of her marriage from an obscured, unpaid, undone, and uncooked teaching. 
she was a kindergarten teacher. Destiny had it that the most famous palace on earth hosts her in marriage. She married the wrong man. And her destiny was affected with affliction. Some of you are here in this school today. In your elementary stage of life. But you might just be the last hope and the first opportunity of your family. Like I said to them in Lagos yesterday. I'm an improvement on my father. You may be the first light to dawn to your family. So if you quench it, you ruin a generation. You better listen to me. If you are the only hope of your father and mother, educationally, or you are the first seed they counted on that through you, all the next people to come out of your family will become someone. And you cut that tree short, or cut that life short, or ruin that life by any means, through any means, through any reason, for any reason. You have not only done yourself harm, you wrecked those who would have become someone through you. How do we know if you are an egg, how many chicks, cocks, and chickens your life would have produced? In an egg, it's more than one hen. Because when the egg is hashed, and produce a chicken, either by cock or hen, more life will come through that life. You might just be an egg within you. Many lives have hope for tomorrow. That's why I've come to say to you, what do you want to be? And what do you want to do with your life? What do you want to do with your life? What do you want to become? For your generation. I give you an example. The president of the whole world now. Is Mr. Bill Clinton. At the age of eight. He told the mother. I'm going to be president one day. At the age of 44. Actually at the age of 45. Almost 46. He contested the election that no one gave him hope. His personal prophecy for himself, I will be president of America, came to pass. Not because he's the best man in America, but he determined not to be the worst. You better listen to me carefully. Today, every young politician is using him as yardstick of success. The whole president, beginning with Mr. Yeltsin of Russia, Chirac of France, Herman Kohl of Germany, Tony Blair of England, Charles Taylor of Liberia, all want to be like Bill Clinton. Only as you relate and associate with what is good, that good intention become good actions. Would you like to be named the most hooligan of your generation? Or will you want to be labeled a criminal from a Edo State University? The good news is this. When you ruin your life, you ruin another generation. And when you, when you save your life, the good news is that you save more people. The bad news is that when you waste your life, you are not only a loss to your father and mother, a loss to the city or village you came from, a loss to your state, a loss to your country, by the time you were born, you're also a loss to it. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? So calculate from your village to your town. And Bruce Ali came from Emado, Epoma. His statue is now erected in the heart of town. This university is out of his benevolence. He read to the highest height of being made a professor in the university. That was not enough for him. He forgot that he was an interior man from inferior. He sailed through thick and thin. Today, whether you believe it or not, the foundation that Ali laid is what this man is building on. And the generation yet unborn will remember that Chief Professor Ambrose Ali lived. By one singular, unforgettable desire to open this university. He may die or he's dead, but his name is alive forevermore. And in the archives of successful men, Ambrose Ali will always be remembered. Can I hear you say amen? amen? Now just think for a while. Think within your scope of little knowledge you have now as a student. Or if you're a professor here, if you're a professor in this school, it's the end of learning. When you read and read and you have first degree, second degree, third degree, fourth degree, fifth degree, and at the end, you are prophetically made a professor. That's the end of academic height. If they call you professor, professor, it's still one professor. And if you are called professor and you can prophesy, then you have hope for extra future. Can I hear you say Hallelujah. But no decent man wants to be named with evil-minded people. Whether it's in political arena, military arena. I'll give you an example. During the last election, a very, 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 very neat, handsome colonel retired in the army, came to appeal to me to give him a letter to take to Abuja to be allowed to contest as chairman of his local government. I wrote to the powers that be and I got a phone call. Even though he ended his career as an army officer, he wrecked his career. We do not want to offend you, your grace. But that man stole. And he was expelled from the army. It is because we do not, in our military form, expose everything. That's why he's called retired. Otherwise, he's actually fired. And they say he can never hold any political position in Nigeria because his career is dented. He carried a gun and carried a badge and never carried character. He rose to the heart of a colonel. But his manner was worse than a recruit. To be opportuned to be admitted in a Doe State University is a privilege. The scenery and the atmosphere of study here deprive you from the waywardness of city romance. And I think you should take advantage of what God has done for you. When I was thinking of what to say to you here, from the Bible, which I will soon go into. 
The Holy Spirit moved in my heart to say to you, all of you, look around geographically, historically, politically, militarily, medically, legally, all aspects of life, of reign. Whether there's any good man that's a member of a court. Not one. Not one. Above Benin is not. Adamu Yang is not. Traditionally, Oba is a monarch. Militarily, Baba Adamu Yang is a governor. Abacha is head of state. What are you like? You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preacher's pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. already there. None of these three people mentioned so far believe in occultism. Coming to decency in nearer home to you, I'm here tonight. No prime minister ever raised in this continent, no president born in this continent has traveled half of my lifespan and I'm a condemner of occultism. If by belief, I don't need it. By power, the head of state don't need it. President Clinton doesn't need it. Why would you like to join what we wreck you before you start? It's a very small question. Find out whether your colleague in courts can boldly come out and contest for any good thing, even at the school here. Once you are known to be a member of secret court, your life ruins in secrecy. You cannot contest to become president of the school union. Except only here. Do they admit them here? Do you accept a member of court to be your leader in this school? You cannot contest as a governor of a do state. You can't run for the position of a minister in the cabinet. You cannot become president of Nigeria because your foundation has stain. That's why I've come to say, take the stain away by abstinence. Abstain from stain. And you have your future built on the word of God. Jesus said in John chapter 14, when scripture I've loved as a child. John chapter 14. 
And the good news is that I didn't come to condemn your former choice, but to give you a new choice. If you were once a member of the court, if you were once a member of secret society, either by inheritance or by interest, there's something better than what you are looking for. In John chapter 14, Jesus admonished his hearer with these words. Number one in verse one. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, also believe in me. In my father's house are many mansions. Just in, imagine the introduction. If you are afraid of the future, say that to everybody. Drop your fear. Say it loud. If you are afraid of the future, Drop your fear. Because ahead of you, say that. There are mansions waiting for you. Can I hear you say hallelujah? Maybe your own, when you grow up, is to have a good house to live in. It's the ambition of every young man. Or to marry a good wife is the ambition of every young man. To ride a good car is the ambition of every young man. These three things mentioned so far can only become your own if you are alive. Yes or no? Yes. And Jesus said, just in case the reason you want to join court or mortgage your soul or sell your life to dead or cultic activity. If it's for you to become famous, there's something ahead of you that God has already planned. And what has God planned for you? To give you a life of steadiness and stability. To ask you, stop troubling your heart. Let it be at peace. Because if you cannot build your own house, in my father's house are many mansions. Somebody say amen. amen. I found Christ at the age of 21. Almost 40 years ago. From that day till now, I'm glad to tell you, I do not know how cigarettes look like. Many things that young men did in, my, in our own time, I was not opportune to know them. Because I knew Christ at the early stage of my life. I put my life in his hand and asked him to guide me. Then he showed me verse 6 of this text. He says in verse 6. Look at what the Bible says here. Jesus said unto him. I am the way. Let me hear you say he's the way. I'm the truth. Say that. And I'm life. Did you hear that? How many of you want to know the way to go in life? Oh, jump up and say, I. I. I didn't hear you say, I. I. One more time, I. I. Sit down. This one has many degrees. He's a professor. He's a pastor. This one has many degrees. Is actually the director of academic planning for University of Benin. And he's a pastor. I'm saying pastor. When I say pastor, he preaches every day and is the head of a church. If this one that have so learned book that they are now books themselves can seek God. And look for better light and life. How much less? I hope you are hearing what I'm saying. By the grace of God, this one is a sole administrator. 
of this whole university. This campus is not less than 20,000 students. He's a pastor and carries Bible. I hope you are hearing what I'm saying. If he can become Brother Mike by implication and involvement in the work of God, why can't you be one like him? Sit down, sir. This one read mechanical engineering in the university. This one read medicine in the university. Both of them are pastors. They've learned enough to know enough. That they cannot be fooled. But there's something fuller than foolishness. It is called fulfillment. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I started late. Academically. Today to my credit. Is three PhDs. Including doctor of education. Yet. The area I'm qualified most. Is the knowledge of Jesus Christ. I am like Paul. I'm not ashamed to introduce you to who changed me. Jesus said, I'm the way. If you are looking for a way to follow. Every one of us want to know whether there's better thing for tomorrow. Jesus said, the road to that thing is me. Oh, you say the reason I'm involved in many things because I want to know the truth. Well, if you want to know the truth, you cannot start with falsehood. A young daft dwarf was trying to introduce the doctrine of Hare Krishna last week. He said 5,000 years ago somewhere in India, Where? India. India. Where they are selling babies for 15 kobo. If you are looking for a talisman, you shouldn't get it from India. That's a nation of 960 million people. Where cow is their national god. C-O-W. M-N-A. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I am the way. The only way that have no diversion or deterioration. The only way you never follow after a while. A block. I was counting yesterday in Lagos how many heads of state I have lived to count in Nigeria. Starting from Sir James Robertson, the last governor general of Nigeria. I was already preaching when he was governor general. 
Then came President Namdi Azikwe Utafawa Balewa. After the era of Namdi Azikwe and Utafawa Balewa, came the era of Yakubu Gowon. I go around briefly. Yakubu Gowon, I was already preaching. Begin to count for me. Robert Singh, Namdi Azikwe, Utafawa Balewa, Agui Ronsi, go on. Are you ready to hear? After go on, Moritala Muhammad, Abbasanjo, Tafa, uh, uh, what's his name? Huh? Shehu Shagari. Are you counting for me? Buhari. Babangida, Chonekon, for three days. Chonekon was there for three days. Eleven. Huh? Abacha. I am still a preacher. Soldier go, soldier come. It also has stay. Promotion, no transfer, no demotion. From glory to glory. What I have come to introduce to you is the hope of your sustenance. Nothing good in darkness. Darkness is darkness. And when you leave the way to go to darkness of darkness, it's not that darkness. You finish your tomorrow. Oh, the children you would have produced, gone. Those who would have looked to you and said, Thank God this man came from our village, gone. Jesus said, I'm the way, I'm the truth. You want to know the truth, hold him. It's truthful enough to tell you truth, it's a way enough for you not to be misled. It's an essential thing to know what is the way. It's an essential thing for you to know what is the truth. When I chose to become a believer, my age group laughed and mocked at me. Those same age group today shower accolades on me because I chose the right path. Those who went to politics, we are not equal. Those who went to businesses, we are not equal. Any area of life they've chosen, I wasn't left behind in my own choice. And I've come to say to you, know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Then Jesus added to it the third dimension, and the most articulate inside of it. I am life. Let me hear you say life. life. Say it boldly. Life. Louder. Life. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and life. Life is important for you to have. Life is essential. Life is hope. Life is power. Life is courage. Life is future. Not only life now, but life eternal. Fajemi Rokun was one of the richest Nigerians. He died without Christ. Fela just died a few weeks ago. He died on a pant. And he died of aid. You can famous his absence, but he's not present. That's a simple English. Famous his absence. He's not present. Thank you, sir. For a man of 60 years old to come out publicly (laughs) 
He was an enemy of decency. He was an enemy of completeness. He was an enemy of civilization. He was an enemy of anything that was good enough. Is that the type of man you want to be like? And when he could not aid himself, aid aided him. Not only that he died of aid, think of all the 27 customers that live with him. Any man that contact those one now, they be aided for the rest of their lives. So when you are bad, it does not only afflict you, it affects another generation. I believe this message is blessing you. Please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com, the world database of Christian preachers, to help us reach 100 million people. The message continues after this video about Anointed Tube. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. truth and I'm life. I didn't come to condemn you. I've only come to show you a better way. The way that I have found has guided me superiorly. Three weeks from today I'll be addressing the parliament in the nation of Fiji. The prime minister and the president will wait for me at the airport to shake my hand and thank me for coming to their country. The coffling that I wore to church this morning was presented to me by the Prime Minister of Australia 18 years ago. I've gone to Assel Rock many times with the flag and the badge of Jesus Christ. Future has something good for you. Don't destroy it while you are young. Ecclesiastes said, Know the Lord thy God in the days of your youth. Edo State University, God bless you. Amen. Student of Edo State University, God bless you.
I've come to say to you, there's something better than what you are looking for. And the best of the best of best is life in God. No sound season academician can associate with occultism. Whether in the department of law, environmental, social science, medicine, once you mortgage your conscience and sell yourself to darkness, respectable, respectful people reject you. And if you can be condemned on earth, certainly there's no room for you in heaven. And at the end, Jesus said, what shall it profit a man? There's a future waiting for you. How many of you will say tonight? It doesn't matter how many wrongs I've done before. It doesn't matter where my way was going. But I like to toe the right path. I like to place my life in his hands. I like to say to God, here am I, free me. We didn't come to condemn you. We come to show you the way. The decision you will take tonight will determine the life of your family and the next generation. For all of you who want to say, God, I don't want to lead myself, but I want you to take my hand and lead me to a path of righteousness. Just begin to come before me here today. You want to have a great future. You want to live your life for God. Stand up from the crowd and begin to come here right now. Quickly. It doesn't matter what you worship before. It doesn't matter your former belief. But you want to say, God, take me from darkness and bring me to light. Show me the right way to follow. Begin to troop out. Begin to come out. Don't let anybody discuss with you. Don't talk to anybody. Just live where you are and come by yourself. Just as I am without one plea. Begin to come from wherever you are. The blood was shed for me on the blood. Just as I am. Just as I am. Just as I am. Just as I am.
last time yesterday evening when Sir Diana was held the any type of gold and stone you can name on earth when Diana go to any country the head of that government stands still to welcome her Sixteen hours ago, almost twenty hours ago, the owner of life took it from her. What will happen to all her gold? What happened to all her silver? What happened to Princess Diane globally? Now that you have life, now that you have Christ. You have opportunity. Choose Jesus. Choose Jesus. Choose Jesus. Choose Jesus. He's a way. He's a truth. He's a life. And the good news is that when you choose him today, you never have association with darkness anymore. There are better groups in this school for you to join. Christian Fellowship International, CASO, Word of Life Group, Christian groups of all kinds, NIFES. Join the Christian group. Surrender your life to Christ. Life has no second chance and no carbon copy. I think there are still about 50 of you that need to get out from there and join us here. You just take a step of faith forward. I'm saying, I'm leaving darkness to go to light. Just as you are. Today is your own. Tomorrow may not be your own anymore. Wash here for the peace. you to lift up your two hands wherever you are everybody stand to your feet everybody stand to your feet everybody stand to your feet may I request you to raise your right hand up and put your left on your chest all professors, all lecturers, all staffs and students, and particularly those of you who came here, who came forward to stand before me. You are standing before God Almighty and in the presence of man tonight to say, God, I can't lead myself. Wherever you are, across the road, anywhere, by those buses and cars, lift up your two hands now, everybody. Say these simple prayers with me. My dear Heavenly Father, I surrender my life to you. I give you my whole life. It came from you. I'm giving it back to you. Take me just as I am. Wash me by the blood of your son Jesus. Make me a new creation. I surrender my whole life. Give me your whole life. From this day, every power of darkness, every way of sin, I give it up. I have decided to follow you from this day and forevermore. Thank you, Father, for the blood you shed for me. At the cross of Calvary. To make me a new creation. In Jesus name. Amen.
Everybody raise your two hands up. Big or small. Everybody. Everybody. We stand before God Almighty tonight. We stand before him with whom we have to do. To declare a do state university free from the power of our court. We lift our hands to say the power of darkness is bound in the name of Jesus. The spirit of our court is bound in the name of Jesus. Every foul disgrace the spirit and killing spirit. I command it go in the name of Jesus. We lift our hands to say take over this university campus as sole administrator and his immediate associates and assistants we commit to you the entire student body will commit to you from now we bind every foul power we set it loose in the name of jesus now by the confession of our mouth at this state university is the first to be free from all forms of darkness in Jesus' holy name. Thank you, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And now from every trace of sickness and disease, from every oppressive and subversive spirit, we command you to be free in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for this wonderful weather and this wonderful 31st day of August. And your seventh first hundred days in office, greater years ahead of every student and faculty and our sole administrator. I will bless the governor of this state. I will bless the whole staff of this school and command that this ground become holy ground. As we sanctify the previous evil here with the blood of the Lamb. Whatever seed was sown here, whatever juju, whatever charm, whatever talisman was buried in the ground is spoiled in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Put your hands down. Give the Lord a clap offering. and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you.
Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idahosa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idahosa is a man that believes with God all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was the Dowser's level of faith beyond mass uh, explanation. He had faith. Spiritual a person, yet he was so human in nature. A man who reached out to everyone, the high and the low in society man who rubs shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. And I've been here with my husband 40 years now. It's a blessing and it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idaosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyudepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's chief, Igbenidion had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told me, in the preach, they said, this is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then many, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edipo came to Church of God Mission, Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached. It was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting, uh, moving on from one project to another and often when he started a new project, we whites, we Oibos would say, why is he doing that? We couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then sometime later we would realize, Yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. In Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that were the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God. On getting there, I met with the Archbishop my first time of meeting the Archbishop Indahosa of Church of God Mission International. It was an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onicha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, and God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the 
uh, advanced team to go and paste posters all over Odisha. And we went to put posters all over Odisha. And the first day of the crusade, a truckload of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform. And, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal Savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye-opener for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so that particular year, I uh, requested, I wrote, and fortunately, I was invited to come. So uh, we went to Nigeria to begin uh, my class. Actually, I went there in 79. My class started in 1980. And uh, we went through the Bible training, and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools. He started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex. He started Benson Hose University, all those. And, well, he's... He's a man we can't, we can't forget. He was a great example to us, and I thank God. It's particularly good for us, whites, British, because in Britain, uh, people are rather skeptical these days. You'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. Um, people of faith are few in Britain, but if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis went to Baltimore, flew to New York, and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain, because it's a 90 seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We rented a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to Benin. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are, and it's raining cats and dogs. What do you want us to do? And when I looked through the wood, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane would lose, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Archbishop Idaosa, who said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft. He lifted his hand. I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said. God, you called me and you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back off. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down. Five minutes and the pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we were under, we have lost our way. We would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos. It was still raining. 
That is where the testimony is. Mama, if that's what I was there, you can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid, can we get a bus so we go to Benin? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? <laughs> I was scared. I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold-plated aircraft. Chief Benedion, he called him. The plane rolled out from the hangar, and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came and said, give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here. There won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned. His name, Chief Ebohon, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God, could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one on one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, uh, he never celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go. He was a man that believed in venturing where others fear to venture. He was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today. He does have started it in 1974-75. I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign, wonder, anointing, and his boldness. I was, I did a meeting for Dr. Maurice Serrillo in 2010. And just before I spoke in his world conference, they said, uh, oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors. It happens in the third world. Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me the Aztecs and began to walk. Um, that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits, and I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take up the spirit that is upon you, and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation. Because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. It, I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland. And when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop in Dahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives.
Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street, and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And one of these days, he was riding past, and people were crying in my house. What's up? <laughs> And he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, with it through the crowd. And he came and I said, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. <laughs> and he said, Ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. Till this time it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, he, please, I beg you. Don't don't make a mockery of your God. He said, No, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that uh, uh, behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpent, to tread upon scorpions and to raise the dead and i said listen don't make a mockery of yourself the kingdom of heaven is at hand heal that sin raise the dead i said what Benson. You mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Uh, no. Why? What you say I can do it? Yes. In the name of Jesus. Hey. He said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was she. She was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, "Listen, this baby died at about nine, and it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The fa why why he why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate." And he said, oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it. I said, how? How are you going to do it? And he said, okay, go out if you don't want to see, see me do it. But, uh, you know, as a stubborn child, then I stood, at the, I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. One, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. And he prayed. Child. Be healed. I will bring to you an offering. After he prayed, he asked me, What is the name of the child? What is the girl's name? I said, It's Inwarata. 
I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world know about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I died. When I died, they kept me inside one room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, a bit three hours later, my father come, my late Ben Sinidahosa. He said, what is happening? He told him that her daughter, her daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the, in the ordinary native daughter tried, they can't raise her back to life. He said, where is her now? He said, she swam in there. He said, he asked my father the question. He said, daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him, come back to life? My father said, yes. He said they should take him to the room. Then take him to where they, they lie me down. So carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray, we God that answered by fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. <laughs> that is how I'm a living so today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, Inuata, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Inuata, I command you, rise up! I was just peeping. And all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about 9 o'clock sneezed. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Another day died to me after a year and three months in the womb. So my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Then he said, maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wood, I'm this, but for God be thy glory. When they gave back to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Do you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand, I couldn't wait, and I ran out. <laughs> with him to the mother. He said, please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, what is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power. Super power. Then I wasn't a child of God. My mother used to serve, um, she was a princess of Olokun, Shango, and all that. And I said, oh, the, the, the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graven images that has no power. So the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then, but I just knelt down and I said, Father, 
let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer. But I just knelt and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like us. That young man that we call pastor believed, and he did this. And you know, when I finished prayer, there was an abundant joy, unspeakable joy in my spirit. And the following day, uh, we, we used to call him Brother Benson. He came and said, where is the child? We said, the child is there. And I called him to the room and I said, you know what I did last night? I did know. Uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just knelt by my bedside and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, let me have a part of that power. I said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, he prayed, and I, and I said the, the sinner's prayer, and that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father Benson Dalsa is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there was, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today I'm alive. I have about eight children, two guys and two boys and six guys. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about 10 grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preacher's pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, 
prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I would like you to know that he was also my spiritual father please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people let this video go viral remain blessed hello this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa his early Christian ministry testimony as a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. And flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard session, I found a company where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child. The God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. The corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Bensi Indaosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938 to a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on a farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. 
He later took correspondence calls from Britain and the United States while working in Bathershoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Akpos on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, Young Benson, Young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a night vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following said the voice from heaven. The room was filled with the presence of God as Benson fell to his knees before the Lord. Wherever you want me to go, I will go. He prayed through the night, renewing his vows to God and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation. After his call, Benson launched into ministry, work preaching from village to village. The gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing. More people confess Christ as their Savior and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria, established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastor churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he, also, he, he was also president of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, president of Idaosa World Outreach, and president of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of, Bish of Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robert uh, University in Oklahoma. He also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971 a doctorate of divinity in 1981 from the world faith college new orleans and a doctor of law degree from ora robert university in march 1984 he also received another degree he's also received other degrees from the international university in Brussels, belgium archbishop benson and his wife margaret idaosa were blessed with four children Idaosa Supreme Tax. So winning was Idaosa primary consign with a motto evangelism our supreme tax. He worked towards his goal of reaching the origin Nigeria, Africa, and the rest of the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a black African, he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries. All 123 countries all over the world. Crusade played a major role in his ministry. He was involved at least one crusade per month. A record crowd of nearly one million people a night attended his Lagos crusade in April 1985. He established the Redemption Television Ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people. What leading gospel minister said about Archbishop Idaosa. According to Mrs. Gordon Frada Lisser, President of Christ for the Nation Incorporated, Dallas, Texas, USA, I know of no young black in all Africa who is preaching, who is reaching million as Benson is in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in, in, a, in his weekly nationwide telecast in his Bible school, training eager students from several nations. He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, 
where he often appeared on national religious telecast. His burden for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrates is a, a, a demonstrate he is especially called of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Benson Daosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got miraculous answer from, his, from this mighty leader of God's people, said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters sit over 10,000 in 1981. His Bible school attract upper class people from different African nations and also come from Maurice, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe, and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminar have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to Africans as well as to Americans. He believed that African has a part in God's work and African will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christian in their own land. It also rose from the rank of an ordinary man to a world leader's leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher, uh, an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion, whose ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. He also, also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people, both in the gospel ministry and other faith of human endeavors. And he applied the principles he learned, he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry. He was very energetic, hardworking. One of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Daosa. He was committed and consistent, and he had confidence in himself he was very humble and full of godly wisdom how bishop bensi idaosa was said to be the leader of over seven million jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the lord in february 1998 now i'm going to 
talk about his early ministry again. As a youth, he got converted to Christianity by a certain pastor at Paul and joined the flagging congregation as one of the first members. He was very active and converted many to Christianity. After experiencing a revelation from God, calling him into ministry, he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Benson Idaosa was well known for many notable quotable quotes, including "My God is not a poor God." Your attitude determines your your attitude determines your attitude. It is more risky not to take risk. I am a possibilitarian. A big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck. If your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Ryan Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include Faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, World of Faith, Group of School, Benson Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of a son, Reverend E. F. B. Uh, Idaosa. His wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is the current Archbishop of the church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blinds, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used to affect the nation of the world. And I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord. I am honored to be a part of his anointing, a part of his, of his ministry. I want to ask you, please make sure you share these videos, this video, this particular video to bless all the people. And make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube, and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contact, get to know about Anointed Tube. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful, powerful, humble, great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him. I, and I'll say it again, I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to Archbishop Bensi in the house. The Lord bless you.